Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier. Thank you, as always, for stopping by. I hope you had a good weekend. We had some rain, lots of it, massive gridlock all around our cities. Um, and even this morning, when I, because I leave quite early in the morning, it was already impossible to get on to the main road. Let's start with some macro thoughts. This is from Delarue, who I visited uh, a couple of weeks ago. This is a cash-based world. Cash accounts for eight and a half out of every 10 payment transactions worldwide. Uh, it gives you pause for thought, doesn't it? Because we keep thinking of ourselves as being launched into this new digital world. Home thoughts, morning drives are the best. We was lucky to see Mount Kenya sun kissed. This is the mentalist. Then this is a different type of photograph from University Way, Nairobi. Um, more metallic, a little bit like that Robert Frank photograph I like. And then this from Vulcan Inc. Happy World Wildlife Day, everyone. Beautiful photographs of elephants. I wonder where that was taken. And finally, Bourdain, who's been visiting Nairobi, hungry cats looking for dinner. I came across a really interesting radio documentary on William S. Burroughs, narrated by Iggy Pop via Open Culture. William S. Burroughs is one of the most mythologized, mythologized, mythologized American authors of the 20th century. When you recall the details of his life, they read like the biography of a fictional character. He was an unabashed heroin addict, yet he dressed like a dapper insurance salesman. He was openly militantly gay at a time when homosexuality wasn't even mentioned in polite society. He shot his wife, Joan Volmer, in Mexico City while playing an ill-conceived game of William Tell and then spent years and Tangiers indulging in every possible vice while writing Naked Lunch, which happened to be one of the most controversial books of the century. And his writing influenced just about everyone you consider cool. Two quotations from him. Desperation is the raw material of drastic change only those who can leave behind everything they have ever believed in can hope to escape. Who was I? The stranger was footsteps in the snow a long time ago. I like this photograph from Finch Hattons. This evening was spent on the viewing deck at Finch Hattons, watching the sun set over a partially cloudy Kilimanjaro. Animal Farm, that's where I went back to George Orwell. No one believes more firmly than Comrade Napoleon that all animals are equal. He would be only too happy to let you make your decisions for yourselves, but sometimes you might make the wrong decisions, comrades. And then where should we be? They had come to a time when no one dared to speak his mind, when fierce growling dogs roamed everywhere, and when you had to watch your comrades torn to pieces after confessing to shocking crimes. And finally, if liberty means anything at all, it means the right to tell people what they do not want to hear. Political reflections, the German Chancellor Angela Merkel has her work cut out now that she's on track to start her fourth term. The Italian exit poll shows centre-right bloc winning the most seats but failing to get a majority. Look at where five-star rank. And I take you back to November 2016 when Beppe Grillo, the founder, I think, of the movement Five Stella, said this is the deflagration of an epoch, it is the apocalypse of this information system, of the TVs, of the big newspapers, of the intellectuals, of the journalists. And I was making the point that traditional media had lost its position of control, it had been upended by the internet, which allowed insurgent politics to broadcast over the top. Interesting article in The, in the Guardian talking about the new way of war 
The front lines in these new conflicts often follow boundaries that divide clans or castes, not countries. They lie along frontiers between ethnic or sectarian communities, even those dividing, for example, pastoralists from herders or the landed from the landless, from those who speak one dialect or language from neighbours who speak another. These front lines are not difficult to trace on the map or on the ground. Top takes from China's NPC GDP target about 6.5%, deficit target 2.6%, defense spending plus 8.1%, and that's from TikTok News. Significant pledge to cut tariffs on autos and consumer goods, open telecom, healthcare, NEV sectors, and of course defense spending. The US president praising Z's power grab. He's now president for life. I think that's great. Maybe we'll have to give that a shot someday, he said. My article over the weekend was about Z Yingping, president for life. Xinhua pronounced this historical announcement. The Central Committee of the CCCP proposed to remove the expression that the President and Vice President of the People's Republic of China shall serve no more than two consecutive terms from the country's constitution. In one fell swoop, President Xi Jinping was President for life, as this will surely be confirmed at the National People's Congress session that's happening now in Beijing. The New Yorker magazine wrote, Last year, during several trips in which I travelled across China by train, two things in particular caught my attention. First, the red hammer and sickle. Second, the only image I saw more frequently in elementary school classrooms, in airports and shopping malls, on billboards, on highways and in rice paddies was the face of President Xi Jinping. Each image was identical, the country's supreme leader with raven black hair and a face fastidiously airbrushed to erase any hint of human blemish, smiling calmly against a sky blue background, an unimpeachable deity in an officially atheist state. It is difficult to measure pushback, but the China Digital Times reported a list of terms excised from Chinese websites by government censors. Includes the letter in Orwell's novels Animal Farm in 1984 and the phrase Z Zedong. Search terms blocked on Sino Weibo include disagree, personality, cult, lifelong, immortality, emigrate, and shameless. Even Winnie the Pooh recently found himself subject to China's latest internet crackdown. Um, China, it, it, it's, even Winnie the Pooh found himself recently subject to China's latest internet crackdown. In July, references to the cartoon Bear on Sino Weibo were removed after his image was compared to President Xi. Dissent is measured and snuffed out very quickly in China. China has unveiled a digital panopticon in Xinjiang where a combination of data from video surveillance, face and license plate recognition, mobile device locations and official records to identify targets for detention. Xinjiang is surely a precursor for how the CCCP will manage dissent. The actions in Xinjiang are part of the regional authorities' ongoing strike hard campaign and of President Xi's stability, maintenance and enduring peace drive in the region. Authorities say the campaign targets terrorist elements, but it is in practice far broader and encompasses anyone suspected of political disloyalty. Xi Jinping has set out his stall. He is deploying sharp power rather than soft power. I appreciate that the USS Carl Vinson is sailing around the South China Sea, but make no mistake, China has elbowed everyone aside in that sea and is now accelerating its position in the Indian Ocean. It seems that we are in the middle of a base race across the Indian Ocean, said David Brewster. 
The Indian Ocean, which borders Africa, the Middle East, Asia, Australia, is home to major sea lanes and choke points that are crucial to global trade. Nearly 40% of the world's offshore petroleum is produced in the Indian Ocean, which also has rich mineral deposits and fisheries. From Sri Lanka's Hambantota port, which China has snaffled up for 99 years, to Gwadar port in Pakistan's Baluchistan, to Djibouti, to the Maldives, and surely soon somewhere in East Africa, China is growing its geopolitical footprint. President Obama's pivot to Asia, which has metasized into the Quad, US, Japan, India, and Australia, when was intended to contain China's big bust wide open. Xi Jinping is making a pygmy of India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who is surrounded on all sides. Pepe Escobar, who writes in the Asia Times, says Xi has all but announced his major moves. The Chinese dream, or China as a stable middle income nation, BRI is a connectivity vector integrating not only Eurasia but also Africa and Latin America. The increasing influence of the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank as well as the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Last year I wrote about Xi Jinping's One Belt, One Road program, binding the world to Beijing because the roads and railways have but one destination, and that is China. It was not long ago that the US was pronounced a hyperpower, a colossus that bestrode the world unchallenged. Fast forward and you will note that Xi Jinping and his able wingman Vladimir Putin have chipped away at the foundations of the hyperpower. This is the New Yorker article, each image was identical, the country's supreme leader smiling calmly against the sky blue background, an unimpeachable deity officially atheist state. And then saying the announcement made last Sunday that the party is proposing to abolish term limits for the presidency further confirms the notion that Z aims to be something other than just another leader in a parade of our apparatchiks. In October when he presided over the 19th Communist Party Congress where his doctrines were enshrined in the Constitution I wrote that Z's status licensed him to play an almost imperial role in shaping the fate of the nation. Shortly after the term limits pronouncement, a widely shared image of China's last Emperor Pu Yi with the caption Emperor Paul's Is My King Dynasty Returning was banned on WeChat. China also banned at George Orwell's Animal Farm, the letter N, a census bolster Z Jinping's plan to keep power indefinitely. Um, and then uh, I was asking, you know, about Xinjiang and I was saying, is Xinjiang the precursor? China will build massive and strong air and naval defense, he says. He says China's military will rally around the leadership of Xi Jinping. Donald Trump joked about the White House chaos at Gridiron Dinner. Who will be the next to leave, Steve Miller or Melania? Senator Schumer, Chuck Schumer, asks CNN, don't under, tell CNN, don't underestimate the power of these kids. That took me back to Youthquake, a significant cultural, political or social change arising from the actions or influence of young people. And I was saying that they slept in during Brexit and woke up for the UK snap election and obviously the, the situation with the NRA has woken them up as well. In this photograph, a Republican militia woman is seen training on the beach outside Barcelona in August 1936. July 2017, I wrote Jared Kushner's The Broker of Our Times, the Adnan Khashoggi at the court of King Donald and the Trumpster. Let's move on to currency markets. We've seen some movement. Euro dollar back below 123 at 122.80. Dollar index must be pushing higher than 90.01 where it was last. Japanese yen 105.50, Swiss franc 0.9363, the pound 137.75, Australian dollar 0.7735, India rupee 65.025, South Korean one 1081.26, the real 325.28, Egyptian pound 17.6323, and the RAD just under 12 at 11.97.51. Dollar index, trade wars have weighed a little bit, but it's now turning around, it seems. Euro dollar this morning was 
well above 123, we're now at 122.85. Um, we're in a bit of an uncertain moment. Italy is weighing, you've got this whole trade war story, so we've got to keep an eye on things. Commodity markets, gold, 13.25.75 last. This is a six month chart. And it got bid up a little bit because of global uncertainty. Crude oil, $61.30. Let's move on to Sub-Saharan Africa. Burkina Faso capital Ouagadougou came under multiple attacks targeting the French Embassy Cultural Center in the country's military headquarters. Um, eventually, they got it under control. Good discussions with number 10 officials on prospects for Zimbabwe. It's been a busy and productive week now on my way back. This is the British High Commissioner to Zimbabwe. President Manangagwa responded, and Zimbabwe's prospects are as bright and positive as your wonderful scarf. We look forward to working together in this new era. Catriona replied to the President, I agree, Zimbabwe's prospects are much brighter than for many years, but ultimately a full revival will depend on meeting your commitments to free and fair elections, rule of law, human rights, respect for the Constitution, and economic renewal. There's been a dispute over Ethiopia's emergency rule vote after footage posted online. On Friday, the House of People's Representatives held an emergency session on state of emergency legislation imposed on February the 16th, a day after Prime Minister Haile Mariam Dessalegn's surprise resignation. The state-run Ethiopian news agency said on Friday that 395 lawmakers voted in favor of the bill putting the government comfortably within the two-thirds majority needed to validate the state of emergency, which bans demonstrations and restricts publications that could incite violence. But footage made public by the privately owned Addis Standard News website showed Parliamentary Speaker Abadullah Gameda stating at the end of the session that 346 parliamentarians had voted in favour. Abadullah also appeared to have made a mathematical mistake, saying 339 was the required two-thirds of 539 seats in the development. China is turning Ethiopia to a giant fast fashion factory. Interesting article in Business Week. The project is Beijing's big experiment in outsourcing and a $10 billion shot on the arm for the African nation, if there isn't a civil war first. Illicit capital flight on the continent. This is from Farida underscore N. She's pointing out Togo. Moody's Investor Services assigns first time local and foreign currency issuer ratings of B1 to the government of Tanzania. Rating outlook is negative. But the point is that's probably signaling that we're, we're shortly going to see um, uh, the issuance of a euro bond from them. At first glance, I thought this was Miami Beach, only to realize it's Tanzania. South Africa, all shares down 2.96% year to date. Dollar versus Rand, stronger dollar pushing the Rand back to as high as 11.97. Dive into Egypt where it all began with carry trade, inflation, interest rates, etc. As Eurobond pushes Egypt's FX reserves north of $42 billion. From an economic point of view, they did everything right. IMF says Nigeria's real GDP per capita is falling despite economy slowly exiting recession. Not difficult to work, it's growing at less than 2% population growth is much faster. Nigerian all share up 12.11% year to date. Ghana Stock Exchange Composite Index up 28.31% this year. Nikwichi is a slice of paradise on the shore of Lake Malawi. This is a photograph I took from the shores of Lake Malawi in August 2016. We swam in that water. It was so clear. Let's move on to Kenya. Stanbic Kenya reported first half earnings per share declined 2.504%. Financial investment surged 42.566% to 71.32 billion. This is in line with most of what most of the banks have been doing, buying more government bonds. But interestingly, um, loads and advances to customers uh, expanded by 8.073%, which is significantly above the trend line. 
deposits from customers surged 24.085 percent so they're obviously getting their deposit taking right uh, which is interesting income after impact sorry um, credit impairment charges was 2.76 billion higher than 1.75 billion last time Profit before tax was down 10.71% to 5.4 billion. Profit for the year after tax down 2.469%. EPS down 2.504%. Uh, total dividend payout 5 shillings and 25 cents um, uh, maintained versus the previous year. Cash and cash equivalents as of the 31st of December 25.85 billion. They expanded the customer loan book, that was interesting. These were resilient earnings. They obviously provisioned more aggressively than, than they needed to. Um, and look at the surge in customer deposits. Uh, on a trading price earnings ratio of 7.6, it looks a cheap share. Africa's first geothermal power plant, Kenjen on Carrier, 70 miles from Nairobi. This photograph is of the independent, um, where they've written a very interesting story about the whole geothermal story. Kenjen is up 3.508% so far this year. Um, trades on a trading P of 6.46. I think has a very persistent buyer adding to their position. My guess is PIC. And I'm looking for 10 shillings. Kenya's newly issued Euro bonds. This is taken from the Cyton report, giving you an idea of how they've traded in the aftermarket. Nairobi all share Ease 0.4% off an all-time high, but remains up 5.88% year-to-date. Inflation rate for the month of February declined to a four-year low of 4.5% from 4.8% in January. NSE 20 is up 1.19% so far this year. Tests commissioned by the nation show that the ready-to-eat chicken is contaminated with bacteria such as E. coli, salmonella, Staphylococcus, Enterobacteria, say, and coliform. Doesn't sound good, does it? Thank you for stopping by.